The wind howled outside, sending shards of icy rain against the windows of the old cabin. Laura shivered, clutching her phone, half expecting it to ring with a rescue call from her friends. They had left her alone in this Airbnb, promising to return after a quick trip to the nearby town. Hours had passed, the daylight faded, and shadows twisted into eerie shapes that flickered across the walls. She wrapped her arms tighter around herself, casting glances at the darkened corners of the room. The host had mentioned something in the welcome booklet about the place being haunted, but she had laughed it off as a marketing gimmick. Now, as the wind shrieked like a banshee, dread seeped into her bones. Every creak of the wooden floorboards set her heart racing. An hour ago, she had heard the low murmur of voices, voices that didn't belong to anyone she knew. Panic clawed at her throat, and she glanced at the door, wishing for her friends to burst through it. The silence that followed the murmurs felt heavier than the storm outside. Laura's mind began to unravel. She thought she saw a figure, a flicker in the corner of her eye, only to turn and find nothing there. The flickering candles she had lit began to sputter, casting grotesque shadows that danced along the walls, the shapes twisting and contorting into monstrous forms. Her imagination spiraled into paranoia, drawing her into a well of fears that threatened to swallow her whole. She grabbed her phone to check the time, but the screen was dark. No signal, no light, just darkness, as if the device itself had chosen to abandon her. Then she heard it again, the whispers now rising and falling like the waves crashing outside. Help us, they pleaded, blending into the wind. She felt her skin prickle, an instinctual urge to flee. But where would she go? The storm had intensified, and the roads would be impassable. With a deep breath, Laura ventured toward the source of the voices, a narrow hallway leading to a door she hadn't noticed before. Its surface was old and worn, a deep mahogany that seemed to drink in the dim light. The whispers beckoned her closer, pulling her into the unknown. She felt like a moth drawn to a flame, curiosity battling with the primal urge to run. As she reached for the door handle, the air grew colder, thick with an unseen presence. Her fingers trembled, hesitation tugging at her resolve. Just then, the door creaked open, revealing a room cloaked in shadows. The air inside felt heavy, charged with electricity. Taking a tentative step inside, she noticed a circle of candles arranged on the floor, their flames flickering wildly. In the center, a tattered rug was stained dark, a stark contrast to the wood around it. She approached cautiously, her heart racing, when suddenly the candles extinguished in unison, plunging her into darkness. She fumbled for her phone, desperate for light, but it was still dead. Panic surged as she felt the air grow thick and oppressive, a weight pressing down on her. The whispers grew louder, surrounding her, echoing her own fears, betrayal, abandonment, death. She couldn't breathe. The walls seemed to close in around her. Then she saw them, pale figures emerging from the darkness, their faces twisted in agony. They reached for her, mouths moving but no sound escaping. She stumbled backward, colliding with the door, which swung shut with a finality that left her breathless. The figures circled her, their eyes hollow, reflecting the depths of despair. In that moment of horror, she realized they were trapped souls, victims of the cabin's curse, unable to escape their fate. Each had their own story, a narrative of betrayal and lost hopes. She understood now. This Airbnb was a trap, a nexus of suffering where the living were drawn to the dead. Fighting against the tide of fear, Laura turned to flee, only to find the door locked tight. She pounded against it, her frantic cries swallowed by the oppressive darkness. The whispers shifted to laughter, mocking her efforts. Suddenly, she remembered the small mirror in the corner of the room, a dusty relic that seemed out of place. She rushed to it, hoping it could offer her a way out. The surface was clouded, but as she wiped it with her sleeve, a vision formed. She saw her friends laughing, enjoying drinks at a bar, oblivious to her plight. Betrayal surged through her as she realized they had left her behind, knowing the danger that lurked within these walls. In a final act of desperation, Laura pressed her palm against the glass, wishing for escape. The mirror rippled, and for a fleeting moment, she felt a tug, a pull toward the other side. But as she stepped closer, the shadows surged forward, engulfing her in a suffocating embrace. The cabin fell silent, save for the echo of distant laughter and whispers that floated through the air, forever waiting for the next victim to wander into their trap. Story number two. 
The night air was thick with a damp chill as Claire parked her car in front of the old Victorian house, a dilapidated relic standing proudly against the moonlit sky. Its ornate windows seemed to stare, and the crooked roof sagged like a tired old man. The listing had promised a unique experience in a historic setting, but Claire's gut twisted with unease as she grabbed her bag. She had come to unwind after a messy breakup, but now an unshakable dread settled over her. Stepping inside, the heavy door creaked ominously, the sound echoing in the empty foyer. Dust danced in the shafts of moonlight, illuminating the tattered furniture and peeling wallpaper. The smell of mildew lingered in the air, mixing with something she couldn't quite place, an acrid scent like burnt rubber. As she dropped her bag near the staircase, she felt a prickling sensation at the back of her neck, as if someone, or something, was watching her. The Airbnb host, a frail old woman named Agnes, had met Claire at the door, her eyes a milky white cloud, veiling any hint of emotion. Just follow the rules, dear. The house has its quirks, she had warned cryptically, her voice a raspy whisper that seemed to echo long after she spoke. Claire hadn't thought much of it then. Now, standing in the living room alone, she felt the weight of Agnes's warning. As night deepened, the house creaked and groaned, settling into its own peculiar rhythm. Shadows elongated across the walls, flickering in the light of a single lamp. Claire pulled out her phone, trying to distract herself with a video call to her best friend. You're really staying there alone? Sarah's face flickered on the screen, eyes wide with concern. I don't like it, Claire. I have this feeling, like you're not safe. Don't be dramatic, Claire chuckled, but her voice was shaky. Uh, the call ended abruptly when the lights flickered, plunging the room into darkness. Panic surged as she fumbled for her flashlight, heart racing. She stumbled toward the kitchen, where a sudden crash echoed from the pantry. Hello, Claire called, her voice trembling. The air turned frigid, and she felt a presence behind her. Turning quickly, she found nothing but her own shadow stretching ominously across the tile. Breathing heavily, she clutched the flashlight tighter and opened the pantry door. Nothing but old jars filled with dusty preserves. A sudden gust of wind slammed the door shut behind her, and she jumped, her pulse quickening. The house felt alive, its walls closing in around her, whispers curling through the air like smoke. That's when she heard it, a soft, melodic humming that resonated from the upstairs. It was chillingly beautiful, echoing through the halls. Claire hesitated, torn between fear and a strange curiosity. Against her better judgment, she climbed the staircase, each step creaking beneath her weight. The humming grew louder, swirling around her like a siren's call. At the top, she found a door ajar, an inviting glow spilling into the hallway. As she approached, the humming stopped abruptly, leaving an oppressive silence that enveloped her. The door swung open with a gentle push, revealing a dimly lit bedroom. In the center stood an antique mirror, its surface fogged with age. As she approached, her reflection shimmered unnaturally, rippling like water. Then, Claire noticed another figure beside her, a shadowy silhouette with glowing eyes. She gasped, stepping back, but the figure mirrored her movements, a cruel smile stretching across its face. Who are you? Claire's voice trembled as she clutched her flashlight, swinging it wildly. The silhouette laughed, a chilling sound that echoed in her mind. It beckoned her closer, and against her will, Claire found herself moving toward the mirror. Join us, it whispered, its voice a blend of seductive and sinister. Claire felt a magnetic pull, the air around her thickening as her heart pounded in her chest. Suddenly, a realization crashed over her like icy water. This wasn't just a reflection. It was a gateway. Agnes, she murmured, remembering the woman's warning. The air shifted, and the temperature dropped. The mirror began to glow, swirling with dark colors that formed haunting faces, people trapped within, their eyes filled with despair. They reached out as if begging for help. Claire turned to run, but the door slammed shut. Panic surged as she banged on the door, her heart racing. Let me out, she screamed, but the only answer was a chilling silence. She felt the mirror calling her back, pulling her closer. Suddenly, the door burst open. Agnes stood there, her eyes glowing, her frail form now exuding an eerie strength. You shouldn't have come here, she said, her voice a haunting melody, layered with a thousand voices. This house is cursed. It needs a soul to survive. Please, no, Claire pleaded, but it was too late. 
The mirror shimmered and she felt herself slipping, her essence drawn into the cold glass. Faces twisted in agony filled her vision as she screamed, but no sound emerged. As the darkness enveloped her, she caught one last glimpse of Agnes, a smile creeping across her face as she faded into the shadows. Another one for the collection, she whispered before the world turned black. Days later, a new guest arrived at the Airbnb, unaware of the fate that awaited them. As they stepped inside, the air shifted with anticipation, the house welcoming yet again another soul to its haunted embrace. Story number three. As the car's tires crunched over the gravel driveway, Natalie hesitated. The quaint cottage in the woods looked innocent enough from the outside, bathed in the last light of the setting sun, but there was something unsettling about its isolated location. No neighbors for miles, only thick, looming trees surrounding the clearing. She shivered, though the air was still warm. I don't like it, whispered James, her boyfriend, sitting beside her in the passenger seat. You're just tired, she said, trying to sound casual, but the truth was, she didn't like it either. Something felt wrong, like the house was watching them. They had found the listing online, an Airbnb with rave reviews. The photos showed a cozy interior, and the host, Mr. Crow, had a perfect five-star rating. It had seemed like a perfect getaway, far from the stress of the city, but now, standing before the eerily silent cottage, Natalie wished they had chosen a hotel instead. We're here now, she muttered, opening the car door. Let's at least check it out. The front door creaked ominously as she pushed it open. Inside, the air was thick with the scent of old wood and something else, something metallic, like blood. She scrunched her nose. The layout was just like the pictures. A charming little living room with a stone fireplace, a kitchen with rustic wooden countertops and a hallway leading to two bedrooms. But something was off. James looked around, his face pale. This place gives me the creeps. Natalie was about to agree when they heard it. A faint whisper, like someone talking just beyond the walls. They both froze. The house was supposed to be empty. Did you hear that? She whispered. James nodded, his eyes wide, but neither of them moved. The whispering continued, growing louder, coming from the walls themselves, rising and falling in an unintelligible chant. Natalie's heart raced. She reached out, grabbing James's arm. We should leave, now. But just as they turned toward the door, the front door slammed shut with a deafening bang, shaking the entire house. The windows rattled, and suddenly the air felt too heavy, like the walls were closing in on them. James ran to the door, yanking at the handle, but it wouldn't budge. It's locked, he shouted, pulling harder. I can't open it. The whispers grew louder, now coming from every direction, surrounding them. They spun around, searching for the source, but saw nothing, just shadows shifting in the corners of the room. Then the lights flickered and went out. Total darkness. Natalie's breath came in short, panicked gasps. She fumbled for her phone, switching on the flashlight. The thin beam cut through the dark, but it didn't make her feel any safer. The shadows seemed to move just out of reach, closing in on them, and then they heard it again. This time, a soft creak from the hallway, like someone was walking toward them. Who's there? James called, his voice shaking. There was no answer, only the steady creak of footsteps coming closer. Natalie shone the light down the hallway, but it revealed nothing. The footsteps continued, closer, closer. A shadow passed by at the end of the hallway, just for a split second, a tall figure, barely visible in the dim light. Natalie's blood ran cold. Did you see that? James nodded, his face pale in the light of her phone. We need to get out of here, he whispered. They backed toward the door again, but the figure stepped into view, a man dressed in old-fashioned clothes, his face hidden in shadow. He didn't speak, didn't move, just stood there watching them. Natalie's heart pounded in her chest. Who are you? she demanded, her voice trembling. The man took a step forward and suddenly the whispers stopped. The house was silent again, suffocatingly silent. Natalie felt her skin crawl as she realized something. This wasn't a man, not really. The way he moved, the way his form shifted and in the dim light, it was wrong, unnatural, like he wasn't fully there. We need to get out. Now, she hissed, tugging at James, but he didn't move. His eyes were locked on the figure, wide and unblinking. James, she whispered, shaking him. He didn't respond, and then she saw it, his face pale as death, his eyes completely black. James! She screamed, but it was too late. He wasn't there anymore. Whatever stood beside her wasn't him. 
In a panic, she stumbled back, dropping her phone, its light flickering out as it hit the floor. Darkness swallowed her, and she felt the air grow colder, the unseen figure now looming over her. In the silence, she heard the door behind her creak open. Blindly, she scrambled toward it, her hands fumbling in the dark until she felt the cold wood of the doorframe. She pulled herself up and ran out into the night, not daring to look back. She didn't stop until she was at the car, yanking open the door and collapsing into the driver's seat, gasping for air. But as she looked up into the rearview mirror, her heart froze. James was sitting in the back seat, staring at her with those same empty black eyes, smiling. Drive, he whispered, his voice not his own, and the shadows outside seemed to close in, crawling toward the car. The engine roared to life as Natalie slammed her foot on the gas, tearing down the gravel driveway. The trees blurred past her, but no matter how fast she drove, the darkness clung to the car, stretching out behind her. And in the mirror, James kept smiling. They never made it out of the woods. The next guests to arrive at the Airbnb, weeks later, found the house just as described online. Charming, quiet, with a history that whispered through its walls. They never made it out, either. Story number four. Airbnb Samantha had always loved the thrill of an adventure, but nothing quite prepared her for her stay at the remote Airbnb. Nestled deep in the woods, the cabin was a charming relic of the past, complete with creaky floorboards and vintage decor. The host's online reviews praised its cozy atmosphere and picturesque surroundings, but none mentioned the unsettling tales of disappearances that clung to the cabin like the morning fog. As she unloaded her bags, the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows that danced among the trees. Samantha shrugged off a chill that crawled up her spine. She'd come here to escape the chaos of city life, to recharge and find inspiration for her writing. But as night enveloped the cabin, a sense of dread settled in, like a heavy fog rolling in from the sea. Samantha prepared a simple dinner, her surroundings growing darker by the minute. The flickering candlelight created sinister shapes on the walls, and the wind howled outside, rattling the window panes as if to warn her. Just as she sat down to eat, her phone buzzed on the table, a text from her friend, Lila. Are you sure you're okay? That place is kind of creepy. Just be careful. Rolling her eyes, Samantha shot back a quick response. I'm fine, just trying to write. But her confidence wavered, and she pushed her plate away, suddenly not hungry. After cleaning up, she settled into a worn armchair by the fireplace, a blanket wrapped around her. The flames crackled, casting a warm glow, but the shadows in the corners seemed to pulse with a life of their own. As she opened her notebook, the pen poised over the first blank page. She felt it, an undeniable weight pressing down on her chest, stifling her creativity. An inexplicable noise interrupted her thoughts. A soft whisper, almost a lullaby, drifted from the hallway. Her heart raced as she glanced towards the sound, half expecting someone to emerge from the shadows. The corridor leading to the bedrooms lay shrouded in darkness, the only light spilling from the flickering fire. Hello, she called, her voice shaky. Silence swallowed her words, thick and heavy. She stood, compelled to investigate, the warmth of the fire retreating behind her as she ventured into the gloom. The hallway was lined with old photographs, their subjects blurred and indistinct, faces hidden in shadow. As she reached the first door, she hesitated, her hand hovering over the knob. The whispers grew louder, beckoning her closer. Was it just the wind? Or something more sinister? With a deep breath, she turned the knob, the door creaking open to reveal a small, dimly lit room. Inside stood a mirror, its surface tarnished and cloudy. She stepped closer, drawn to the reflection of a room that seemed to shimmer and pulse. In the mirror, she saw not her own reflection, but that of a young woman in a vintage dress, her expression twisted in sorrow. Samantha gasped, stumbling back. What the hell? The woman in the mirror raised a hand as if to reach out, but the glass shimmered and distorted, and she vanished. Heart pounding, Samantha turned to flee, but as she backed away, the door slammed shut behind her, trapping her inside. Panic clawed at her throat, and she banged on the door, yelling for help, but her voice faded into silence. She sank to the floor, the weight of despair pressing down on her. The whispers transformed into a wail, a mournful cry that echoed through the cabin, filling her with an overwhelming sense of loss. With a surge of determination, Samantha scrambled to her feet and raced toward the mirror. She pounded on its surface, desperation fueling her as she shouted, Let me out! 
The glass rippled, and she caught glimpses of the young woman, her eyes wide with fear, pleading for freedom. Suddenly, the room swirled, and Samantha felt herself being pulled into the mirror, the boundaries between reality and reflection blurring. She screamed as her surroundings faded, darkness swallowing her whole. When she opened her eyes, she was back in the cabin, but something was different. The atmosphere had shifted, a heavy weight of grief settling around her. The fire crackled softly, but the warmth felt distant, like a fading memory. She reached for her phone, eager to call Lila, but the screen was cracked, displaying only a reflection of the cabin's dark corners. A chill crept through her, the realization dawning. She had escaped the room, but the cabin had changed. The walls felt closer, the air thicker. She stumbled to the mirror once more, only to find her own reflection staring back at her, eyes filled with horror. But behind her, in the shadows, she could see the figure of the young woman from the mirror, her ghostly form slipping silently into the darkness, dragging Samantha's heart with her. As night fell deeper, the whispers returned, this time more coherent. Stay with us forever. Samantha turned, her heart racing, but the shadows had swallowed her friend, the air heavy with sorrow. And outside, the storm raged on, but within the cabin, time stood still, caught in the grip of a curse that refused to let go. Story number five. The reflection. The rain fell in sheets, drumming a relentless tempo against the old wooden cabin nestled deep in the woods. Sarah had chosen this remote retreat to escape her hectic city life, eager for solitude and a chance to reflect on her turbulent year. Yet as she stepped inside, a chill crept up her spine despite the warmth of the fireplace crackling in the corner. The cabin was sparsely furnished, the wooden beams dark and worn. A large mirror hung over the mantel, its surface clouded with age. It was beautiful yet foreboding, a relic of a forgotten time. Sarah brushed her fingers against its cool frame, feeling an odd pulse beneath her touch. She shook off the feeling and settled into her new surroundings, hoping to find peace. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the wind howled outside, shaking the cabin with an eerie intensity. Sarah curled up in a blanket, reading by the flickering light of a lantern. Hours slipped by, the darkness thickening around her. Just as she began to doze off, she heard a whisper, soft and indistinct, rising above the sound of the wind. Sarah. Startled, she shot up, scanning the room. The fire flickered, casting dancing shadows on the walls. Hello? She called, her voice trembling. Silence answered her, thick and oppressive. Unable to shake the sensation of being watched, she turned her attention back to the mirror. Its surface seemed to ripple, reflecting not just the room, but something else. Something lurking behind her. Sarah's heart raced as she faced the glass. Her reflection stared back, Yet there was an unsettling delay, as if it were moments behind her movements. Get a grip, she muttered, shaking her head. But the feeling of dread clung to her like a heavy fog. She tried to dismiss it, telling herself it was just the isolation getting to her. That night, as she lay in bed, sleep refused to come. Every creak of the cabin sent her heart racing. Then she heard it again, a soft voice, closer this time. Sarah, help me. Who's there? she whispered, voice barely audible. The air grew colder and a shadow moved in the corner of her eye. She shot up, scanning the room, but found nothing. Feeling an urgency she couldn't explain, Sarah approached the mirror. As she stood before it, the surface darkened, swirling like stormy waters. The whisper intensified, a chorus of voices pleading for release. Help us! Help us! Terrified, she stumbled back. What do you want? she shouted. The mirror shimmered and for a brief moment a figure emerged, a woman with hollow eyes, tears streaming down her cheeks. Trapped for so long, the figure gasped, reaching toward Sarah. Fear clawed at her throat as Sarah backed away, her mind racing. I can't help you, she cried, but the woman's gaze was desperate, her hand pressing against the mirror, distorting the glass as if trying to break free. In a moment of horror, Sarah realized the truth. The cabin wasn't just a retreat. It was a prison, and the mirror held souls, trapped and tortured, yearning for release. She turned to flee, but felt a pull, as if the mirror were drawing her closer. She fought against it, heart pounding, but as she neared the door, it slammed shut. Panic surged, and she pounded against the wooden frame, desperate to escape. Help us! The voices cried in unison, growing louder, their sorrow wrapping around her like chains. Sarah spun around, confronting the mirror once more. The woman's face had twisted into a mask of anguish, 
her mouth moving in a silent scream. Please, Sarah begged, stepping closer, her breath fogging the glass. How do I help you? The figure pointed to a small, ornate box on the mantle that she hadn't noticed before. Sarah's heart raced. Could it be the key to their freedom? As she approached the box, the whispers grew frantic. Open it, they urged. With trembling hands, she lifted the lid, revealing a collection of delicate silver charms, each engraved with names. As she touched one, a rush of cold air swept through the cabin, and a deep, rumbling voice echoed from the mirror. You must choose, it growled, the room shaking with its power. Release one, but take their place. The weight of the decision crushed her. No, I can't, she cried, but the figure in the mirror smiled now, a glimmer of hope shining through its despair. The whispers intensified, each soul urging her to choose, to sacrifice herself for another. The atmosphere grew heavy with desperation, and Sarah felt the cabin closing in, the walls constricting like a vice. In that moment of turmoil, clarity washed over her. Um, she remembered her own past, the guilt of leaving behind her sister during a family tragedy, the years of pain and regret. I'll do it, she whispered, feeling a strange sense of calm. I'll help you. The mirror pulsed with energy, and the woman stepped forward, her expression shifting from agony to gratitude. Thank you, she breathed before the glass shattered in a blinding flash of light. For a heartbeat, everything was silent. Then, Sarah found herself standing before the mirror, but it was no longer cloudy. She gazed into it, and there she was, her reflection as clear as day, but behind her was a dark void. The voices fell silent, the shadows retreating, and in that moment, Sarah understood. She had freed a soul, but in doing so, she had sealed her own fate. The weight of the past pulled her back into the depths of the mirror, her screams echoing in the silence. Days later, another traveler stumbled upon the cabin, unaware of its dark history. As they stepped inside, the air shifted and a flicker of movement caught their eye in the mirror. A new face, forever trapped, whispering softly, Help me. Story number six. The small cabin sat alone at the edge of the dense woods, its weathered wooden exterior blending seamlessly with the surrounding trees. Jenna pulled into the gravel driveway, her heart racing with excitement and a touch of anxiety. She had booked this Airbnb on a whim, needing a break from her hectic city life. But as she stepped out of her car, a prickling sensation crawled up her spine and she glanced over her shoulder, feeling as if unseen eyes were watching her. She shook off the feeling, attributing it to her overactive imagination. The host, an elderly woman with a warm smile, had assured her that the cabin was cozy and safe. Inside, it was just as inviting as she had hoped, with soft lighting, a crackling fireplace, and rustic furnishings. Jenna took a deep breath, letting the scent of pine and wood smoke calm her nerves. This was exactly what she needed. As night fell, the woods outside transformed into a tapestry of shadows, each rustle of leaves setting her on edge. Jenna sat on the couch with a glass of wine, flipping through the book she had brought. Yet the words danced across the page, eluding her focus. A sudden knock on the door jolted her upright. Heart pounding, she glanced at the clock, 10 p.m. Who could that be, she murmured, glancing out the window. The dark forest loomed, an impenetrable wall of trees. She approached the door cautiously, peering through the peephole. Nothing, just darkness. Hello, she called, her voice quaking. Silence hung in the air like a dense fog. Deciding it was probably a prank or some animal, she returned to her book, attempting to shake off the unease. Hours passed and Jenna's eyes grew heavy. Just as she was about to drift off, the knocking came again, louder, more insistent. The sound echoed through the cabin, reverberating against the walls. Okay, this isn't funny, she shouted, frustration mingling with fear. She hesitated, staring at the door as the knocking subsided into a soft tapping. Against her better judgment, she opened it a crack, peering out into the inky blackness. Nothing. Just the silent forest, dark and foreboding. She sighed and closed the door, feeling foolish for letting her imagination run wild. As she turned back to the living room, a chilling realization washed over her. The warmth of the cabin had vanished, leaving only an icy grip. Before she could think, a loud crash echoed from the kitchen. Jenna froze, adrenaline flooding her system. Grabbing the nearest object, a heavy candle holder, she crept towards the sound, each step deliberate and cautious. The kitchen was dimly lit, the moon casting eerie shadows through the window. To her horror, she found the wooden chairs strewn across the floor, 
one overturned, the table tipped at an odd angle. Hello, is anyone here? She whispered, her voice barely above a breath. Suddenly the temperature dropped even further and Jenna felt an inexplicable dread crawl over her skin. She turned to leave but froze as she caught sight of something in the reflection of the darkened window. A fleeting shadow, a figure behind her. She spun around but the kitchen was empty. With panic rising, she rushed back to the living room, only to find her phone flashing. No signal. The air thickened with a palpable tension, a sense of malevolence that made her skin prickle. She picked up her bag and rummaged through it, searching for her flashlight. Just as she clicked it on, the lights flickered and died, plunging her into darkness. Her heart raced as she swung the beam around the room, illuminating nothing but the empty space. In that moment, she heard it, a soft, raspy whisper, like wind through dry leaves, chilling her to the bone. Stay with us. Terrified, Jenna bolted for the door, but the moment she reached for the handle, the whispers turned to laughter, echoing all around her. She stumbled back, horrified, the cold air wrapping around her like a vice. Jenna recalled the host's words about past guests, tales of those who had come to the cabin seeking refuge, only to vanish into the woods without a trace. The realization struck her like a thunderbolt. She was not the first to stay here, nor would she be the last. As the laughter faded, she felt a presence, a rush of air that passed through her, chilling her to the core. She darted for the back door, praying for an escape. But as she yanked it open, the forest loomed, dark and impenetrable, an endless void. Help, she screamed, her voice swallowed by the night. But the only answer was silence. A heavy weight bore down on her as if the cabin itself were alive, breathing, watching. The candles flickered back to life, illuminating a figure standing just behind her, an apparition of a woman with hollow eyes and a sorrowful expression. Help us, the figure rasped, her voice a haunting echo of despair. Jenna felt a pull, an urge to reach out, but she stumbled back, dread curling in her stomach. As the figure stepped forward, the realization hit her. The woman had once been a guest, just like her, ensnared by the very cabin she had sought refuge in. The door slammed shut with a deafening finality, trapping Jenna in a nightmare of her own making. In the fading light, Jenna understood there would be no escape. The woods would claim her, just as they had claimed the others, a part of the cabin's twisted legacy. The darkness closed in and the whispers returned, a symphony of lost souls beckoning her to join them, forever part of the Airbnb's cursed history. Story number seven. Rachel had been driving for hours, the winding country roads stretching endlessly before her as the setting sun cast long shadows across the landscape. She tightened her grip on the steering wheel. The GPS said she was close, but with nothing around for miles except dense forest, she couldn't shake the uneasy feeling that had settled in her chest. This was a terrible idea, she muttered to herself. Her best friend Hannah had insisted she needed this break. You've been through too much. Get away, relax. This Airbnb looks perfect. It's isolated, quiet, peaceful. Trust me, it'll be good for you. Now with night falling and not another car in sight, Rachel was second guessing the wisdom of escaping to a remote cabin alone, but she was already here. Turning back would be an admission of defeat. Just as the sky darkened completely, her headlights swept over the driveway entrance. A small hand-carved sign read Woodhaven, the name of the cabin she had rented. Relieved, Rachel pulled in. The trees formed a tight, oppressive barrier on either side, blocking out the horizon. The house stood at the end of the drive, surrounded by towering pines. It looked even more secluded than she had imagined. The wooden structure with its single flickering porch light seemed to rise out of the earth like it had been there for centuries, untouched by time. Rachel grabbed her bag and stepped out into the cool night air. It was quiet, too quiet. No birds, no wind, just stillness. Her footsteps seemed unnaturally loud as she approached the door. She fumbled with the keys and finally managed to get inside. The cabin was just as advertised, cozy, rustic, and utterly devoid of modern distractions. The living room had a large fireplace, a few armchairs and shelves filled with old books. A thick layer of dust coated everything, like no one had been there in years. But it was cheap and isolated, just what she'd needed, right? Rachel set her things down and took a deep breath. Maybe the quiet would be good for her, after all. She wandered through the house, checking out the small kitchen and the single bedroom at the back. 
As she passed the bathroom, the door creaked open slightly, revealing a cracked mirror hanging crookedly on the wall. She closed it without a second glance. Later, as she unpacked her things in the bedroom, she noticed something strange. The window was wide open, though she could have sworn she hadn't touched it. A cold breeze drifted in, carrying with it the faint scent of pine and something else. Something metallic, like rust. She shrugged it off, thinking maybe the window had just been left open by the cleaning crew. But the unease was building again. Shaking her head, she pushed the window shut and locked it. By the time Rachel was ready for bed, the house felt impossibly still. She lay in the dark, listening to the sound of her own breathing. Then, just as she was drifting off, she heard it, a soft, scraping noise, like nails on wood, coming from somewhere inside the house. She sat up, her heart pounding. The sound stopped. Silence. Rachel waited, straining to hear, but there was nothing now. Just the house settling, she whispered to herself, though the explanation didn't feel convincing. But then a thud. This time, it came from directly above her. She froze. There shouldn't be anything above her. The cabin was a single story. Slowly, she got out of bed, her feet hitting the cold wooden floor, and crept toward the hallway. The air felt heavier as she reached the living room. The fire had gone out, leaving the room in darkness except for the faint moonlight filtering through the windows. That's when she noticed something odd. The front door, which she had locked, was now slightly ajar. Rachel's pulse quickened. She grabbed her phone, the flashlight barely cutting through the shadows. As she approached the door, the scraping sound returned, louder now, as if it was coming from the walls themselves. Her hand trembled as she pushed the door fully open. The cool night air rushed in, but there was nothing outside, just the trees and the darkness beyond. But something felt off. She took a step outside and noticed footprints in the dirt leading away from the cabin, into the woods. Footprints, but not hers. Panic surged through her. She spun around to rush back inside, but the door slammed shut on its own, leaving her locked out. Her heart raced as she banged on the door, desperately trying to open it, but it wouldn't budge. Then she heard it, whispering, faint, unintelligible, coming from the other side of the door. Rachel's breath came in short gasps. Who's there? She shouted, but the whispering continued, growing louder, more insistent. She backed away from the house, her eyes darting to the woods where the footprints led. The trees seemed to close in, casting long, sinister shadows in the moonlight. Rachel felt a cold sweat break out across her skin. Her phone buzzed suddenly, the noise cutting through the silence. She fumbled with it and her heart stopped as she saw the notification. A new message from the Airbnb host. You shouldn't have come here. Her fingers trembled as she opened the message. Another one followed immediately. Leave before it finds you. Rachel's heart was pounding now, her eyes flicking between the dark woods in the cabin, where the whispers had grown to a fever pitch. She tried to call for help, but her phone had no signal. In her panic, she started running down the driveway, her footsteps loud in the oppressive silence. As she reached the edge of the property, she glanced back one last time. There, standing in the doorway of the cabin, was a tall, thin figure, its face hidden in the shadows. It was watching her. Her blood ran cold. She turned and ran faster, the whispering chasing her through the trees, louder now, no longer just in her head. The next morning, when the new guests arrived at Woodhaven, they found the cabin empty. Rachel was never seen again. Story number eight. The Airbnb listing promised a weekend getaway in a peaceful, isolated cabin nestled deep within the pines. It was the perfect escape for Clara, who needed to recharge after a grueling year. She pulled her car into the gravel driveway, excitement bubbling inside her as she stepped out into the crisp mountain air. The cabin was charming, its wooden exterior weathered yet inviting. Clara took a moment to absorb the serenity of her surroundings. Tall trees swayed gently in the breeze, and the faint sounds of birdsong filled the air. But as she unlocked the door and stepped inside, an unsettling sensation washed over her, as if she were being watched. The interior was cozy, filled with rustic furnishings and a faint smell of cedar. A handwritten note from the host sat on the dining table. Welcome, Clara. Make yourself at home. Don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything. She smiled at the warmth of the gesture, though an inexplicable chill lingered in the corners of her mind. After unpacking, Clara decided to take a walk. The woods beckoned her. 
and she felt drawn to the whispering trees and dappled sunlight. As she wandered deeper, the path narrowed and the air grew still. The birds had fallen silent, an eerie quiet settling around her. Suddenly she stumbled upon an old, crumbling stone well hidden among the trees. It was covered in vines and moss, and an unnatural darkness seemed to seep from its depths. Claire appeared inside, but the darkness swallowed the light, making it impossible to see anything. Maybe it's just an old well, she muttered to herself, trying to shake off the creeping sense of dread. But as she turned to leave, she heard it. A soft, almost imperceptible whisper calling her name. Clara, come closer. She shook her head, trying to convince herself it was just the wind. But curiosity gnawed at her. What could possibly be down there? Against her better judgment, she crept closer, peering into the abyss. The whispers grew louder, now almost pleading. Help us. Help us. A wave of nausea washed over her, and Clara stumbled back, her heart racing. She quickly left the area, the whispers echoing in her mind as she hurried back to the cabin. Shutting the door behind her, she tried to dismiss the incident as a figment of her imagination, a product of isolation and fatigue. That evening, Clara made dinner, attempting to distract herself, but the shadows in the corners of the room seemed to grow longer, and the air felt thick with unease. Just as she settled down with a book, her phone buzzed, a message from the host. Just checking in. Hope you're settling in well. Don't venture too far into the woods after dark. A chill ran down Clara's spine. She had already strayed farther than she should have. As night enveloped the cabin, she tried to focus on her book, but every creak of the house made her jump. Finally, exhaustion overwhelmed her, and she retired to bed. In the dead of night, she awoke to a scratching sound, faint but insistent, like nails against wood. Heart pounding, Clara sat up, her eyes darting around the darkened room. The noise continued, growing louder, more frantic. Is someone there? She called, but her voice trembled. The scratching ceased, replaced by that haunting whisper again. Clara, please. Terrified, Clara jumped out of bed and grabbed her flashlight. She tiptoed toward the door, the beam trembling in her hand. The moment she opened it, the scratching resumed, more desperate than before, leading her down the hallway and toward the staircase. She hesitated at the top, her heart racing as she pointed the flashlight down into the inky darkness below. The beam illuminated the living room, and to her shock, the front door stood ajar, swinging gently as if inviting her outside. Don't go out, the whisper warned, low and menacing. It's not safe. Clara felt a surge of fear, but also a strange compulsion to obey the call. She stumbled down the stairs, the air growing colder with each step. The scratching had morphed into a frantic clawing, like something was trying to escape from the walls. She hesitated at the front door, her breath hitching in her throat. The whispers turned into a cacophony, rising and falling like a haunting melody. Join us. Join us. In that moment, Clara remembered the well, the voices, the plea for help. Her instinct screamed at her to turn back, but something deeper compelled her forward. She stepped outside, the cold night air biting against her skin, and moved toward the well, the shadows wrapping around her like a shroud. As she approached, the whispers intensified, now pleading and angry, echoing through the trees. Help us! Release us! Clara knelt beside the well, the dark void swirling with an otherworldly energy. The whispering voices became a roar, filling her with confusion and despair. She leaned over the edge, peering into the darkness below, and suddenly she felt a strong pull, as if something was drawing her in. Help us, the voices screamed, and without thinking, Clara reached out, her fingers brushing against the edge of the well. In that instant, the ground beneath her shifted, and she lost her balance, tumbling forward. Time slowed as she fell, the cold darkness enveloping her. A flash of terror crossed her mind. Had she been lured here, just like others before her? As she plummeted into the abyss, the voices transformed into a symphony of laughter and cries, echoing her fate. Then everything went dark. In the cabin, the wind howled through the trees, and the front door creaked open once more. The host watched from the porch, a knowing smile on her lips. Another guest lost to the woods. Another voice added to the whispers that echoed from the depths of the well. Story number nine. The lighthouse at Windward Point had stood tall for over a century, a solitary sentinel overlooking the stormy sea. It was said to be haunted by the spirit of its last keeper, Old Man Hawthorne, who vanished mysteriously one stormy night, 
leaving the lighthouse dark and abandoned. The townsfolk spoke in hushed whispers about the strange lights that sometimes flickered in the tower and the eerie sounds that echoed across the waves. When Sophie arrived in the nearby village for a summer job as a caretaker for the dilapidated structure, she had heard the legends, but dismissed them as mere tales meant to entertain tourists. With a deep breath, she stepped inside the creaking door, the smell of salt, salt mill filling her nostrils. The lighthouse was a relic, its white paint peeling, and the spiral staircase leading to the lantern room was worn with age. As she unpacked her belongings, a sense of foreboding settled in her chest. The townsfolk had warned her to avoid the tower at night, but curiosity gnawed at her. Sophie made a deal with herself. If she was going to spend the summer here, she would explore every inch of the lighthouse, even if it meant confronting the town's superstitions. That first night, the winds howled outside, rattling the windows. As she settled into bed, the lighthouse groaned and shifted, and Sophie found it hard to sleep. The wind seemed to carry whispers, soft and indistinct, teasing her ears with secrets from the past. Finally, unable to resist, she slipped out of bed, threw on her jacket, and climbed the stairs to the lantern room. The door creaked open and Sophie stepped inside. The beam of light from the lantern swept across the ocean, illuminating the turbulent waves crashing against the rocks. But it wasn't the view that held her attention. It was the strange glow emanating from the far corner of the room. There, in the shadows, stood an old oil lantern, flickering with a light of its own, though it had been extinguished for decades. As she approached, the air thickened, and she felt a chill that ran deep into her bones. The whispers grew louder, forming coherent phrases that sent a shiver down her spine. Help me! Find the truth! Heart pounding, Sophie reached for the lantern. As her fingers brushed the surface, the room spun, and she was engulfed in a vision, a glimpse into the past. She saw Old Man Hawthorne, his face lined with worry, struggling against the storm. A shipwreck was looming in the distance, and the light of the lighthouse flickered dangerously. No, he cried, as shadows began to envelop him. I can't let it happen again. The vision shattered as abruptly as it had come, leaving Sophie gasping for breath. What had she just witnessed? Was the keeper warning her of something? The whispers echoed in her mind, urging her to seek the truth. Determined to uncover the mystery, Sophie spent the following days researching the lighthouse's history. She uncovered tales of shipwrecks and lost souls, each story more tragic than the last. But there was one story that stood out, an infamous ship called the Nightingale, which had vanished on a stormy night long before the lighthouse was built. Locals believed it carried a treasure, lost to the sea. That night, Sophie returned to the lantern room, her heart racing with anticipation. The storm had returned, raging outside like a wild beast. As she lit the old lantern, the whispers surged, swirling around her like a tempest. Find the treasure. Set us free. Driven by an inexplicable force, Sophie examined the walls of the room, searching for clues. The beams creaked, and suddenly, she noticed something glimmering in the corner. A small brass key, half buried beneath the floorboards. She pulled it free, the whispers rising in urgency. With the key in hand, she ventured down to the base of the lighthouse, her heart pounding. There, she found a hidden door behind an old shelf filled with dusty books. The key turned with a satisfying click, and the door creaked open to reveal a narrow staircase descending into darkness. Taking a deep breath, Sophie stepped inside. The air grew colder, and the whispers intensified, urging her forward. At the bottom of the stairs, she discovered a small chamber filled with crates. In the flickering light of her lantern, she pried open a crate to reveal gold coins and jeweled trinkets, remnants of the fabled treasure from the Nightingale. As she marveled at her discovery, the whispers transformed into anguished cries. Release us, they pleaded. The shadows thickened, swirling around her like a storm. Sophie stumbled back, realizing that the treasure had come at a terrible price. The souls of those lost at sea, bound to the lighthouse by their greed and despair. No, this can't be, she shouted, fear gripping her heart. What do I do? Burn it, break the curse, the voices cried in unison, echoing through the chamber. With a newfound resolve, Sophie gathered the coins and trinkets, racing back up the stairs. The storm outside roared like a vengeful god, shaking the very foundation of the lighthouse. She burst into the lantern room and threw open the window, the wind howling in protest. 
Holding the treasure high, she shouted into the tempest, I release you. With that, she hurled the coins into the raging sea. The moment they hit the water, a blinding light erupted from the lighthouse, illuminating the night sky. The cries of anguish morphed into a chorus of relief as the shadows lifted, swirling away into the storm. As the light faded, Sophie collapsed onto the floor, breathless. The air grew still, and the oppressive weight lifted. The lighthouse stood silent, the whispers finally quieted. Weeks later, as Sophie prepared to leave Windward Point, she looked back at the lighthouse, now a peaceful monument against the horizon. The townsfolk spoke of the lighthouse no longer being haunted, of the strange lights having vanished. But as Sophie drove away, she caught a glimpse of a figure standing at the tower's edge, Old Man Hawthorne, smiling gently, his spirit finally at peace. Story. Story number 10. The cold wind howled as Lily pulled her suitcase from the trunk of her car. The Airbnb listing had promised rustic charm and seclusion in the heart of nature. But as she stood there in the growing twilight, staring up at the crumbling old mansion, she felt a twinge of regret. The place looked ancient, far older than the pictures had suggested, with ivy crawling up the stone walls and windows so dark they reflected nothing. She shivered, but it wasn't just from the cold. Just a weekend, she muttered to herself. I just need a break. The weight of her recent breakup pressed on her, and all she wanted was a quiet escape where she didn't have to face the sympathetic looks of friends or the suffocating city. This was supposed to be that escape. She glanced down at her phone. The host, someone named Margaret, had left detailed instructions on how to get in. No one would be there to greet her. Uh, through a stack, and the nearest neighbor was miles away. Perfect, she had thought at the time. Now, standing in front of the creaky wooden door, she wasn't so sure. The key was hidden under a rusted lantern by the door, just as the instructions said. With a click, the door swung open, revealing the dim interior. The air inside was thick, musty, like the place hadn't been lived in for years. A layer of dust coated the furniture, but the grandness of the house was undeniable. High ceilings, grand fireplaces, and large ornate windows, but everything was cloaked in shadow. Lily stepped inside, the floorboards groaning under her weight. She flicked the light switch, but nothing happened. Of course, she muttered, feeling around for her phone's flashlight. The darkness swallowed the beam of light as she walked through the hall. Something about the house felt off. It was too quiet, too still. The air itself seemed to hum with an eerie energy. As she moved through the rooms, she noticed small details that weren't in the photos. Old portraits hanging crookedly on the walls, showing stern-faced people from another time strange scratches on the floor by the stairs, and a door at the end of the hallway that wasn't listed in the house's description. Curiosity got the better of her, and she tried the handle. Locked. Shrugging it off, she made her way to the kitchen, where she found a note left by Margaret. Welcome to your weekend escape. I hope you enjoy the peace and quiet. Don't worry if you hear any noises at night. It's an old house and the wind likes to play tricks. Lily frowned, her unease growing. She wasn't one to scare easily, but the atmosphere in the house was suffocating. Every corner seemed to hold a secret. She tried to shake off the feeling, reminding herself that she was just being paranoid. After unpacking, she settled into the living room with a glass of wine, trying to relax. But the house wasn't cooperating. A strange draft kept swirling through the room, despite all the windows being closed. And then came the noises, soft at first, like footsteps upstairs, but impossible to ignore. Lily froze, listening. The house had two floors, but she hadn't been up there yet. The footsteps continued, slow and deliberate. Her heart raced as she set her wine glass down and stood, the floor creaking beneath her. There's no one here, she whispered, her voice trembling. It's just the wind. It's just the wind. But the sound persisted. Heavy footfalls, one after the other, moving across the ceiling above her head. Lily grabbed her phone, its flashlight trembling in her hand as she made her way to the staircase. She didn't want to go up there. Every instinct screamed at her to leave, but something compelled her forward. A pull she couldn't explain. As she reached the top of the stairs, the air felt colder, the draft stronger. The hallway stretched out before her, dark and silent. The doors to the rooms were all closed, except for one at the very end. It was the door that had been locked earlier. Her pulse quickened as she approached, the floor creaking beneath her with every step. 
The door was slightly ajar now, a sliver of blackness spilling into the hallway. Lily reached out with trembling fingers and pushed it open. Inside, the room was empty, except there was something on the floor, a small wooden box, old and worn, with strange symbols carved into it. She knelt down, her hands shaking as she reached for it. Something about the box felt wrong, but she couldn't stop herself. She opened it. Inside was a crumpled piece of paper, yellowed with age. She unfolded it, her breath catching in her throat as she read the single line scrawled across it. You're not alone. Suddenly, the door behind her slammed shut with a deafening bang. Lily jumped to her feet, her heart pounding in her chest. She rushed to the door, yanking on the handle, but it wouldn't budge. The room felt smaller now, the air thick and suffocating. And then, from the shadows, she saw it. A figure, standing in the corner, tall and impossibly thin, its face obscured by darkness. It didn't move, didn't make a sound. It just watched her. Lily's breath hitched, her mind racing. She hadn't heard anyone come in. She hadn't seen anyone in the house. But now, now she wasn't sure. Was the figure real, or had it always been there, watching her from the corners of her vision? She backed away, pressing herself against the door, her hands shaking as she tried to open it again. The figure remained motionless, but somehow it felt closer, the air around her growing colder. And then with a slow, deliberate motion, it raised its hand and pointed, pointed directly at the small wooden box still sitting on the floor. A sharp knock echoed through the house coming from downstairs. Lily's breath caught. Was someone at the door? Who could be out here in the middle of nowhere? But when she glanced back, the figure was gone. The room was empty once again, as if it had never been there at all. Another knock, louder this time. Lily scrambled to the window, peering out. Her heart sank. A woman stood outside the house, her face pale in the moonlight. She was wearing an old-fashioned dress, her hair pulled back in a severe bun. It was Margaret. But something about her was wrong, too. Margaret looked up, meeting Lily's gaze through the window, her eyes dark and hollow, her mouth open, but no sound came out. And then, slowly, she raised her hand and pointed. Right at Lily. The knock echoed again, but this time, it came from, from inside the house. 